video, we are going to look at the National Grid and Transformers for GCSE A2A Electricity. So when we talk about the National Grid, we are talking about the system of wires and transformers that is responsible for getting electricity from the power station to our homes. So the National Grid is really this bit inside the red box here. We're not so concerned about the power station, which is other companies, and then obviously the houses, which are privately owned and not part of the national grid. It's the transmission cables and it's the transformers. So students do need to know the process. They need to obviously know that electricity is generated in a power station, which could be fossil fuel, nuclear fuel, or renewable energy. Uh, they need to know that it goes through a step up transformer through the cables, which are usually referred to as high voltage through a step down transformer, which we will talk about a little bit later, and then into the home at 230 volts, 50 Hertz, AC alternating current. If it was going into a factory, uh, it would actually be a little bit different. They're typically uh, maybe 400 volts or maybe more. Uh, and they'd also be different because they're known as three phase electricity. Now, the students don't need to know this, they don't need to know what three phase is, but it's really interesting and worth looking up to extend your knowledge. Uh, but they do need to know that in a home, it's 230 volts, 50 hertz AC. So it's obviously important that students know these, these steps, but it's also a really nice chance to show them how some of these things work in the real world. So uh, you can show them some fun facts. Uh, so I just got these off the National Grid website. Technically, the National Grid does also take into account the gas pipelines that transport gas around the UK. We don't really talk about that at GCSE. And it also talks about interconnectors. So you can show them pictures like this. The picture on the left are some of the main uh, gas lines and overhead lines in the UK. Obviously, it's not every single one, but it's some of the main ones. Uh, and on the right, you can see interconnectors with the UK because at various times, we either import or export electricity to meet our demands or deal with surplus electricity, particularly when we're dealing with uh, wind that is notoriously unreliable and often we have surplus or a need to import electricity. So you could also show them this website, uh, which you can obviously see what the link is. It's really nice because it shows us up to date demand for electricity. Uh, it shows us how much we need in gigawatts, it shows us the frequency of electricity and it shows us the combination of sources that make up uh, our electricity um, portfolio. Uh, and then there's all these graphs that show the weekly, daily, yearly demand. And again, that's really nice because you can show to students, and you can really talk about why that demand varies over the year or over the day. And students are expected to interpret this uh, thinking back to the energy unit. You can also uh, contrast it with France, uh, which is quite interesting because France uh, are almost all met by either nuclear or renewable energy. So their carbon footprint is incredibly low from their electricity um, generation. So from uh, the various things I just showed you, you might have noticed that uh, the units that we're working in are quite large. So we're typically working uh, in either megawatts or um, gigawatts, so MW or GW, which is 10 to the 6 or 10 to the 9. So students do need to uh, be familiar with these prefixes. So let's go into a bit more depth about why we have these transformers, because that's probably the, the more complicated bit. Just retaining this basic information is usually fairly straightforward for students. So we've got two types of transformers. Uh, the point of these is to increase efficiency. So I will go into the general idea about increasing efficiency, and then I'll go into a bit more detail about how transformers work. So the idea is that energy is lost by heating, or energy is transferred away from ele electrical uh, transfer to heat, and we obviously don't want that. So there are energy losses due to heating. 
So we need to reduce that. So how, how can we quantify this? Well, typically we say that it's a power loss and we typically work that out because of I squared R. Now we know that power is IV and it can be shown that it's equal to V squared over R, although this is not GCSE. Uh, this is the equation we use. So what is causing this power loss? Well, it's a current. And if you double the current, the power loss is going to increase by a factor of four. So trying to reduce current is the most efficient way to reduce energy loss. So at this stage, we do need to really be linking this idea uh, back to what we taught in the first half of electricity, which is increasing current causes heating which due to collisions between um, ions and electrons increases resistance. So we need to be linking this back for this to make sense. Now, obviously, if you have the correct data for these two equations, of course, it will work and it will give you the same answer. But there's a reason we use this. It's because we're interested in the current through the wire, which is really easy to measure. We can just put an ammeter in there and measure it. If we're trying to measure potential difference, well, what you need to do is you need to actually measure the voltage drop or the difference in potential between the start and the end, which is firstly quite hard to do if we're talking about the real world, because we're talking about hundreds of kilometers. Uh, and also, you know, these the supposedly have a low resistance, so the voltage drop should be quite small. So it's not always as meaningful to talk about the voltage as it is to talk about the current. Obviously, they will give you the same answer, but this is what we use to explain it. I know I've repeated that, but it is really important. So what are we trying to do? We need to reduce the current, and then we can reduce the heating uh, and reduce these losses here. So we use transformers to do that. So transformers... will increase the potential difference and decrease the current if it's a step up uh, and if it's a step down step down will decrease the potential difference and increase the current so basically you reverse what we've done so what we do is we increase the potential difference decrease the current we have less energy losses due to heating and then we reverse our changes to get what we actually want back at the other end so these high voltage uh, power lines, they might be uh, 110 kilovolts. Some of them, I think, are about 400 kilovolts. So really, we're stepping these up a huge amount. Now, how transformers actually work beyond this is something that we come back to in electromagnetism. And it is higher to erroneous. So it might be that you choose to stop teaching at this point, or it might be that you think, well, I'm talking about transformers, so why not talk about how they work as well? And there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer here, uh, but there is one piece of physics that students won't have met. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean they can't understand it. So it's really quite straightforward. We have an AC current in. That induces a changing magnetic field. in the uh, magnetic core. I'm just going to abbreviate it to B field uh, in the iron core. And that changing magnetic field therefore induces an AC current in the output side or the second coil side. So usually uh, we label these as the primary coil and the secondary coil. So we could say there's an AC current in the primary coil that induces a changing magnetic field in the iron core, and that induces an AC current in the secondary coil. We cannot use DC here. DC will not work. That is because direct current is only in one direction, so you'll initially get one uh, pulse of electricity will induce one pulse of uh, or one magnetic field that will induce one pulse of current on the outside on the output side you need a constantly changing current in order to constantly induce magnetic fields to constantly induce currents so it has to be AC and if you're doing any demos with transformers the most common mistake is that students will use 
uh, DC from the power packs rather than AC. In terms of how we can calculate the voltage out, it's really easy. It's basically all just ratios. So the, the ratio of coils on the primary to the secondary coil is equal to the ratio of voltages on the primary to the secondary side. So for example, if we have 10 coils here, 20 coils here, if we put 10 volts in, we double the voltage. If we have three times the number of coils, we triple the voltage. The trade-off is the current goes down. So that is equal to the current on the secondary over the current on the primary in terms of ratio that flips down. So if we double the current, we halve the potential difference. If we times the voltage by 10, then we divide the current by 10. Uh, and that's basically all there is to it. Now, uh, sometimes you might talk about power, and we generally assume that power in equals power out. We assume they're close to 100% efficient. So V in, I in the primary side equals Vs, Is. And you can see that actually if you talk about in terms of power and make this assumption, you actually get this ratio uh, directly from this. It's just another way of helping students remember this. Now, is this an, uh, an okay assumption to make that they are almost 100% efficient or they are 100% efficient? Well, it's, it's not bad. Transformers are pretty efficient, uh, but they're not 100% efficient. Uh, they will heat up over time uh, and you do often hear them humming as well. So there are some energy losses by sound, but you know they're usually pretty uh, efficient. Uh, there are a couple of things that's useful to know, although there's a little bit beyond GCSE, uh, that we use iron uh, because it is easily magnetized, uh, which means there are very few energy losses in magnetizing it. Some materials take uh, a lot more effort to magnetize, and so you actually lose energy in the process of making them mag uh, magnetic. That doesn't really happen with iron. Uh, the other thing that we do is we laminate the core. So we actually make the core out of lots of very thin layers of iron uh, that we would actually laminate with a plastic coating. Uh, and the reason we do that is to reduce eddy currents. And eddy currents are little currents that form in a kind of circular direction. And what they do is they generate their own magnetic field, which opposes this changing magnetic field and tries to reduce the overall magnetic field in it, which therefore means there's an energy loss because the current uh, that we induce on this side will be reduced because there is less of a magnetic field here. Now, these eddy currents try to form uh, in the metal, but if we laminate the core and make it of really thin layers, these eddy currents are tiny, right, because they cannot uh, move past this, this coating into the next uh, layer of iron. The magnetic field can pass through, but the current can't because we're making you know, them out of, the lamination out of a non-conductor. And that is pretty much it. Uh, so here is a nice summary of it all.